Hi, I'm Brandi Heflin. I'm a personalized physics instructor, and I help high school and college students feel confident and successful in learning physics. Welcome to my AP Physics exam preparation video series. Over the next several weeks, I will be recording a sample video each week for each of the four AP exams to be released to review with students the free response questions or sample free response questions to demonstrate the kinds of questions that students will be asked and to demonstrate to students how the exam is going to ask them to show their knowledge. As a tutor working with students all over the country, I know that not all students have the opportunity to work with released exam materials prior to exam day. Some instructors choose not to use the released materials, and in some cases, students at independent and private schools are taking classes that are AP level content, but the schools are not calling the courses AP so that they have more freedom and flexibility in what they can teach. And this video series is intended primarily for students who have not had exposure to the released exam materials. So AP Central lists the following types and number of free response questions that students can expect to see on the AP Physics C Mechanics exam. There will be one question that includes experimental design or has a lab-based component. The other questions, or I should say all three questions on the whole, will assess all seven of the science practices, visual representations, question and method, representing data and phenomena, data analysis, theoretical relationships, mathematical routines, and argumentation. The video today will be from C Mechanics, the 2015 exam question one, which was on kinematics and Newton's laws. A block of mass M is projected up from the bottom of an inclined ramp with an initial velocity of magnitude V naught. The ramp has negligible friction and makes an angle theta with the horizontal. A motion sensor aimed down the ramp is mounted at the top of the incline so that the positive direction is down the ramp. The block starts a distance D from the motion sensor as shown above. The block slides partway up the ramp, stops before reaching the sensor, and then slides back down. Part A, consider the motion of the block at some time t after it has been projected up the ramp. Express your answers in terms of m, d, v naught, t, theta, and physical constants as appropriate. Part one, determine the acceleration a of the block. So this segment right here, with expressing our answers in terms of these given quantities and physical constants and doing the work all symbolically is common across all four AP physics exams, but even more prevalent on the um, C exams. So here's where we need to start. Let's, even though it's not required, let's go ahead and draw ourselves a free body diagram that has the weight of the block straight down. And then I haven't quite, that arrow wasn't quite as straight as I, you know, prefer it to be, but it'll do. And then we've got the normal force that is perpendicular to the ramp. And if I extend down as a, you know, Y axis that's perpendicular to the ramp, we're gonna recall that this angle here between my gravitational force that's supposed to be straight down and that new y-axis is my angle theta of the ramp. So we're also going to need to remember that the positive direction is down the ramp. And so now we can go ahead and apply Newton's second law. How do I know to do that? Because I don't have enough information to use kinematics. So we'll start with Newton's second law, net force equals ma, and it's going to be the component of the weight that's parallel to the ramp that is supplying our net force. So Fg parallel equals ma, and our component of the weight that's parallel to the ramp is mg sine theta. Set that equal to ma. And we can see that our mass will cancel out on both sides of the equation. 
and we can say that our acceleration will be equal to g sine theta. And we will get a point for a correct expression of a positive acceleration. Part two, determine an expression for the velocity v of the block. Ah, now we have enough to use kinematics. Let me grab a color here. So we just determined that the acceleration is g sine theta. We have an initial velocity that has a magnitude to be expressed as v naught, but that initial velocity was up the ramp, which is negative. So we're going to write negative v naught as the expression for the initial velocity. We um, can write this in terms of t. And yeah, that's actually it. That's all we need in order to use the expression v equals v naught plus a t. And then we can substitute in the things that we know. So negative V naught plus G sine theta times T. And here, our points are going to be for, and I, there we go. I sometimes lose my cursor, especially when it's a lighter color. We're going to get plus one for substitution uh, into a correct kinematics equation consistent with our acceleration in part one. And then our second point is going to be for the correct sign on the initial velocity. Part three, determine an expression for the position x of the block. So, once again, we're looking at using some kinematics. So our basic equation is delta x equals v naught t plus a half a t squared. But we're going to have to split up delta x into final position minus initial position equals v naught t plus a half a t squared. And then we're going to need to add that initial position to both sides. And I really could have done my substitution in that last step and then kept uh, rearranging, but this is a fine time to do it. So our initial position, remember our motion sensor was at zero at the top of the ramp and our block starts a distance D down the ramp. And that's a positive displacement down the ramp. So our initial position is going to be d minus v naught t plus one half g sine theta t squared. And similar to that last part, we're going to have, um, oh, in this case, we actually just have one point for substitution into a correct kinematics equation consistent with the expressions
in parts one and two. Part B, derive an expression for the position x min of the block when it's closest to the motion sensor. Express your answer in terms of m, d, v naught, theta, and physical constants as appropriate. So let's pull up that diagram again. And we're going to want to add in, uh, just for a physical reference, that, uh, you know, let's indicate where our block is going to be at x min. So a key thing is going to happen here, which is that our velocity at that x min is going to be zero meters per second. So again, other things that we know are that the acceleration is g sine theta. We know the initial velocity is equal to negative v naught. And you'll notice that there's no time t listed. So that really leads us to only one possible expression, which is v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a delta x. So here we go. We'll substitute zero for that final velocity. We'll substitute negative v naught for the initial velocity. We need to substitute g sine theta for that acceleration. And then, <coughs> excuse me, our change in position is gonna be the final position as we move up the ramp, which is x min, minus the initial position, which was d. So let me work out some boring algebra for you here. Actually, we don't need that anymore. Parenthesis can go away at this step. All right, so we need to subtract our v naught squared from both sides. That will be equal to 2g sine theta times the quantity x min minus d. So let's divide both sides by 2g sine theta. That will be equal to x min minus d. And now we have our final expression. When we add d to both sides, x min equals d minus v naught squared over 2g sine theta. This part had two points assigned one of which is for substitution. Into a correct kinematics equation consistent with part A. And I'm just gonna abbreviate, abbreviate it kin this time instead of writing out kinematics equation. And it's really worth pointing out that if you happen to um, have gotten something wrong in part A and you carry that through and use it correctly in subsequent parts, notice that you're not getting penalized for that. And that's a practice that tends to exist across all of the AP physics exams. All right, and now that I'm looking at it, I'm not happy with how that A looks. So we're going to just clean up that part A just a little bit so it's a little bit clearer for you to read. So consistent with part A, there we go. And then our second point is going to be for the substitutions of uh, zero for V naught and D for X naught. I almost forgot uh, that there is also an alternate solution using 
conservation of energy for this. And I encourage you to check out the scoring guidelines and um, the sample student responses to see how to execute that. Part C, on the axes provided below, sketch graphs of position X, velocity V, and acceleration A as functions of time T for the motion of the block while it goes up and back down the ramp. Explicitly label any intercepts, maxima, minima, um, or minima with numerical values or algebraic expressions as appropriate. Excuse me again. So I like to start with acceleration for this because we already established back in part A that we have a constant force from the component of gravity directed parallel to the ramp, which means we're going to have a uniform acceleration. And we know that down the ramp is positive. So we need a constant positive acceleration, which is going to be a horizontal line with a positive value. Next, we know that our velocity is going to start off negative because we went up the ramp. And we know that when we have a negative velocity and a positive acceleration, we're going to be slowing down. And we know that that's what the block is going to do. So we're going to need a line on our velocity time graph that shows a steady decrease in speed to zero and then an increase at the same rate when the block changes directions. So we have a straight diagonal line with a y-intercept at uh, a negative v-naught. And now we can go ahead and think about our position time graph we're going to start at a positive d, and our position is going to decrease to x min, getting closer to our motion sensor. And on the way up, we're going to be slowing down. So our position is decreasing at a decreasing rate. And then when we change direction and start going back down the ramp, our position will be increasing at an increasing rate. So that's going to look like a parabola that starts at d, loops down to x min, and then comes back up to d. Okay, so as far as points, for our position time graph, uh, oops, I missed the one, plus one for a parabola, that doesn't cross the t-axis, And the vertex doesn't touch the t-axis. We're going to have a point on our velocity time graph for a straight line that crosses the t-axis. And we're going to have a point on our acceleration graph. Um, okay, we're going to clean that up just a little bit. Hang on. I really messed up writing positive one. Um, so we need an acceleration graph um, that's a straight horizontal line. Or I should say that's a horizontal line. And then our final point is going to be for a set of consistent graphs. So notice that, you know, they didn't ding you for not having a positive slope on your velocity time graph, but if your velocity time graph isn't consistent with um, your acceleration and position graphs, then you would not get the point for that. And likewise, if you somehow drew like an upside down parabola or something, um, 
like with negative position values, that, you know, would also not be something that's consistent with the rest and you would not get that final point. Part D, after the block slides back down and leaves the bottom of the ramp, it slides on a horizontal surface with a coefficient of friction given by mu k. Derive an expression for the distance the block slides before stopping. Express your answer in terms of m, d, v naught, theta, mu k, and physical constants as appropriate. So the first thing to note is that, you know, when our block, that's a bad block, goes up the ramp at negative v naught, when it comes back down the ramp, it's going to have a velocity of v naught when it returns to its starting point. So that means that our block is going to have an initial velocity of v naught when it enters this horizontal portion of the problem. So we know that our block is going to be accelerating due to friction. So we know we're going to have to, before we can do anything kinematics wise, um, to get this distance, we are going to need to, you know, use Newton's second law all over again. So, you know, we'll do net force equals MA. And we know that um, our friction force, I'm going to go ahead and just abbreviate it with a lowercase f. So our friction force is going to be opposite the direction of the motion and the block's going to be slowing down. So we can say, you know, the opposite, well, negative, sorry, negative friction equals ma. It's the easiest way to say it. And so now we need an expression for friction. Well, remember that friction is just going to be mu k times our normal force, but the normal force is just going to be equal to um, fg. I should go ahead and put that here. It's just going to be equal to fg because our block isn't accelerating vertically, so the forces are balanced. So we can say that our friction force equals mu k times mg. So we can now say negative mu k mg equals ma. Let's bring this one down and we're going to bring this one down. Uh, actually, let me fix that, make that a little bit, just a little bit easier. So we're going to bring this one down and then bring this one down. There we go. So we can say that our acceleration will be equal to negative mu k times g. So now we can turn our attention to what are we going to do for kinematics? So again, we know that the initial velocity will be v naught. We're asked to find d. We know that our final velocity will be zero because we are stopping. And now we have an expression for acceleration. So once again, we're guided to um, a single kinematics equation for this v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a. And I'm going to call um, this little distance d um, the stopping distance. I didn't want to use, uh, you know, I just wanted a different symbol than what we've used for some of our other distances and displacements. Yeah, so now we can substitute 0 squared equals v naught squared plus 2 times negative mu k g times d. And we'll bring that negative v naught squared to the other side. That will be equal to negative 2 mu k g d. So we can cancel out those negatives. I'll just go ahead and divide by 2 mu kg. And so here is where our points come from. We're going to have um, one point for a correct expression for friction.
And then we're going to have uh, one point for our correct answer for that distance. And it is worth noting, didn't forget this time, that there is an alternate solution using the work energy theorem. And I encourage you to, again, check out the scoring guidelines and the sample student responses to see how that one plays out. And at last, part E. Suppose the ramp now has friction. The same block is projected up with the same initial speed V0 and comes back down the ramp. On the axes provided below, sketch a graph of the velocity V as a function of time T for the motion of the block while it goes up and back down the ramp, arriving at the bottom of the ramp at time TF. Explicitly label any intercepts, asymptotes, maxima, or minima with numerical values or algebraic expressions as appropriate. Notice that they have marked TF and a half of TF for us, and that's going to be really important um, when we start constructing our graph. So let's talk through what this looks like. On the way up the ramp, the frictional force and the component of gravity parallel to the ramp both point down the ramp resulting in a greater acceleration on the way up the ramp while the block is slowing down. And on the way down the ramp, the frictional force points up the ramp. The component of gravity parallel to the ramp is pointing down, which results in a smaller net force and thus a smaller acceleration while the block is moving down the ramp and speeding back up. So with a greater acceleration, on the way up than on the way down, it's going to take less than half of the total time to go up the ramp and more than the total time, more than half the total time to come back down. So our graph is going to look like this. And our point values here, um, we have one point for a change in slope when, uh, let me write that a little bit more neatly. For a change in slope when our graph reaches the velocity of zero, we're going to have a point for um, slope values in each segment. with the same sign and uh, the correct relative magnitude. I'll we'll write it as relative mag for relative magnitude. And then our final point is going to be for a graph that crosses before TF over two. and then extends to T final. So I hope you have found uh, today's explanation of this mechanics exam question. If you have a video solution request for my YouTube channel, that I can complete after I'm done with my AP Physics exam series, then you can reach me at physicsproblemrequests at gmail.com. If you need some email assistance limited to 10 questions per academic year, you can reach me at freephysicshelpline at gmail.com. If you want to learn more about my online physics tutoring services, you can email me at brandyhefflinphysics at gmail.com. You can visit my website, virtualphysicsofficehours.com, or you can find me on Facebook. I'm physics tutor Brandy. Just a few notes and disclaimers. 
AP is a registered trademark of the College Board. The College Board does not endorse or recognize this video or my services. All of the materials presented are available on AP Central at the link shown here for the AP Physics C Mechanics exam. And those materials include the release-free response questions, the scoring guidelines, and sample student responses and commentary. I strongly encourage students to review those sample responses to get a feel for the different levels and quality of the responses that were prepared by the students who took those exams live, and to see what the scores for that year were looking for and how they decided to award points. If you have any questions, you can reach me at brandyheflinphysics at gmail.com. I'm physics tutor Brandy. I love physics, and I love helping you. Until next time.